Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. A-I-T-A-H for wishing my parents never adopted my sister and that I don't want her in my life. I, a 36-year-old woman, have a sister who is also 36 years old and was adopted into my immediate family. I wish that my sister, whom I will refer to as Jane, had never become a part of our family. Jane is actually my cousin, and my parents took her in when I was about 17 years old. Her parents had split when she was 13, creating a very unstable environment for her. This led to years of legal battles between my parents and hers in order for my parents to gain guardianship of her. We were always very close, practically like twins, despite being only six weeks apart in age. So when my parents finally obtained custody of her, I was thrilled to have Jane officially become my sister. However, my excitement didn't last long. I was immediately placed in the role of the older sister, and was given the responsibility of looking after Jane. I had to integrate her with my friends, drive her everywhere, and overlook any inappropriate behavior due to her traumatic past before living with us. When she started getting involved with my male friends who were in relationships and causing conflicts, I realized that things were going downhill. I was put in the middle of numerous arguments between my friends and my sister, and was always expected to take her side because she is family. Not long after she moved in with us, she began dating one of my ex-boyfriends, Steve. Although Steve and I had broken up amicably, it was still uncomfortable for me to see my sister dating someone I used to be in a relationship with. Over time, I adjusted to the situation, and we all hung out together. However, shortly after they started dating, I went through a series of short relationships, and she began cheating on Steve. I was torn between my loyalty to my sister and my friend. In the beginning, I stayed silent because she was my sister. But then she started cheating on Steve with the guys I was dating at the time. I don't understand why she chose to do this, but the guys I dated either broke up with me to be with her, knowing she had a boyfriend or cheated on me, and I found out through others. Initially, I confided in her mom, but she told me that family comes first and that I should forgive Jane because she had a tough life, and it's not her fault that I choose to date terrible men. This pattern continued for years. Jane even asked me to keep her secrets because she wanted to stay with Steve, but wanted the emotional outlet that these other guys provided, paraphrased. I have to admit that there were a few instances where I didn't directly tell Steve, but I dropped hints that didn't match up in stories or asked him to hang out where I knew she would be in the hope that he would catch her. After several years of this and Steve eventually finding out about every instance of infidelity, they ended their relationship. Around that time, I started dating my now husband, 37M, who was a close friend of mine and knew my history with Jane. Disliking her, which calmed my anxiety that I would once again lose a boyfriend to my sister. Also, I'll point out that through all of this, yes, my mother would always say, she's family, and we always love our family, so forgive and move on, she's had a hard life, be the bigger person because you were raised better than her. So I did. Fast forward to our mid-twenties, and I'm now married to my husband, and Jane is now dating her now husband John, 37M. They moved a few states away for a while, and the economy was tanking. They wanted to move back home, but had no money saved up, could barely afford their bills, and John had just had a serious injury that kept him out of work for a while. So I offered for them to move in with my husband and me, rent-free, to get back on their feet and save some money. During these few months, Jane was working, and John was recovering at home. He never did his dishes. They didn't really contribute to any groceries, and hated that I asked them to do chores around the house. It was a constant battle just to get little things picked up, or to ask for help with laundry schedules, and to keep their bathroom clean. I don't think I asked too much, especially since I wasn't asking for money to help with the increased utilities and groceries while they saved. Instead, they decided to book a cruise and buy a brand new car during this period. When I came home to a new car blocking my driveway, I was furious. I called my mother for advice, and she took the stance that what they did with their money was their business and not mine. So I decided then that at the first of the next month if they wanted to continue to live in my house, they were going to start paying rent. They cried that paying rent would cut into the money to pay for the new car and keep them from going on the cruise they booked. I didn't budge, saying their money was not my business but that my charity had run out if they could afford those things. So they decided they would move out sooner rather than later. During that time, they also lived with us while my husband and I were struggling with infertility, this comes in later. My sister was one of the few people who knew we were struggling, and at one point I had managed to get pregnant. I was so excited and over the moon. But unfortunately, we suffered a miscarriage and were devastated. My sister saw firsthand how bad my depression was, 
and how hard it was for me to see all of my friends having babies while my husband and I couldn't. As the due date drew closer, my depression worsened. Thankfully, my sister moved out soon after my miscarriage so my husband and I could grieve together, without feeling like we had to hide in our own home. So I'm sure you can maybe see where this is going. About a month after that original due date, my sister asked me if she and her husband could come over. My mom was in town and they wanted to have dinner together. I usually love family time, so I agreed, and we ordered pizza and hung out. My godparents also came so they could visit my mother. Lo and behold, during this visit, my sister and her husband announced they were pregnant. Total shock to me because John had always said he never wanted kids. And to add insult to injury, they kept going on and on about how we didn't mean to get pregnant, we now have to cancel the cruise because I'm due around that time. I hope this next round of IVF works for you because I always wanted to have kids closer in age like us. I lost it and excused myself to go to bed and cried myself to sleep that night. The next weeks operated in a haze and my husband just held me while I cried every night. After about a week, I called Jane. I needed to let her know that even though I was thrilled to be an aunt and happy she was having a baby, my sadness was overwhelming and I needed space. Also, I wanted to let her know that since Christmas was coming up, we should probably do separate events because I didn't know if I could emotionally handle seeing her open baby presents just yet. She said she understood, and we cried together. I really thought this would be okay. I was honest and communicated. My mother thought I was overreacting and should just be happy for Jane. But Christmas came and went. We did have separate events, but this is when I guess her feelings changed. Come February, my mom was in town visiting and staying with us. She told me she had a gathering that weekend and wouldn't see us one day. I thought nothing of it, but that afternoon, my mother-in-law called me to ask if we could carpool to Jane's gender reveal. I was dumbfounded. I knew nothing of a gender reveal, and I told my Amiel that I must not have been invited. So I called my mother and asked what her plans were the next day. She hesitated, and I called her out and asked if she was going to Jane's gender reveal. She admitted that yes. She was, and I angrily asked why I wasn't invited. She told me it was because I told Jane I needed space, and that since I couldn't just be happy and get over my depression, I wouldn't have expected to be invited. Screaming back at her I asked, Then why would you ask my in-laws and not me, especially if you were trying to hide it, did you not think I'd find out? So I cut communication between my mom and Jane for a while. I needed to focus on her IVF cycle coming up, not my extremely insensitive family. So I never told them. We did that round and we got our positive pregnancy test soon after. My husband and I decided we would keep it to ourselves for a while after our last miscarriage so that my family didn't expect me to suddenly be rainbows and sunshine about everything leading up to this point. When we decided to announce, Jane contacted me and was upset I didn't tell her about my pregnancy. She didn't understand why I would hide it from her and she thought we were closer than that. I finally asked her why she kept her gender reveal a secret and her response was that she didn't want me to say I wasn't coming. And it all clicked. Ever since she moved in with us, she had been nothing but selfish, and since my mother conditioned me to just take Jane's emotional abuse and never confront her about it, she thought all of it was justified, and my feelings never mattered. At that moment, I decided in my head that I would be making low contact with Jane. And I would be telling my parents about my need for this. I wasn't going to back down. At this point, over a decade of countless friendships and relationships were ruined, because Jane and my mother were always pushing me to forgive her, and I finally saw how much of a doormat I had become. During this process, our youngest sister, 29F, grew to resent me because she only ever heard Jane and my mom's side. I was overreacting and jealous. So enough was enough. My husband and I agreed that when it came to Jane, we would only participate in the big Christmas family gift exchange, and outside of that, I would not contact Jane. I started therapy to combat my abandonment issues due to her treatment and confidently placed boundaries with my family concerning Jane. I didn't back down. So, for years between then and now, I didn't explain the whys. I just needed this to maintain my peace. Finally, this winter, my mother asked why, after so much time, I couldn't just forgive like I used to and move on, bringing Jane back into my life. This is where my bluntness might make me the asshole. I finally unloaded almost 20 years of trauma and resentment to my mom about her actions and Jane's. During that process I told my mom, I wish you had never adopted her because my life would be completely different, I wouldn't have trust issues with those closest to me, I wouldn't have abandonment issues with my family and other loved ones.
I wouldn't be resentful, then I feel like I lost my family to the evil twin who could do no wrong because I can tell you since I stopped involving her in my life it's been so much more peaceful and I've been healing with no one else's help but my husband and therapist. Think I'm the problem child all you want but really it's the child you chose to take in and forget that you had a child that needed you and you picked her.